Hi, welcome. This is Patty Bennett. I am so excited to have you join me today to learn to make these super cool, amazing cards. Aren't these pretty? I am live today. This is April 23rd. So if you're joining me live and you see this little live red button up there, you'll know that I can see you live. If you're joining me later, that is completely fine as well. I will be posting this on my blog and on YouTube later, so you might be watching it there. I am excited to show you how to make these. I created them with felt and Stampin' Up! ink refills. So I'm going to show you how to actually create the pad and how to stamp these. And we'll just sort of go over the colors and the supplies. So welcome if you're joining me. I was just jumping on just a moment before the top of the hour to make sure that everything is all set up. And I want to just say welcome again. So I'm Patty Bennett. I blog at pattystamps.com. I try to have a new project or information or tips for you every day on my blog, and I really enjoy it. This is my full-time job as a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I am blessed. It's wonderful, and I'm so glad that you're joining me today. Hi from the UK, Donna. Hi, Debbie and Cheryl. Good to see you on here. So we are going to be using the this stamp set, and it was a Million Dollar Achiever stamp set, and I just love this. It came out, um, what, a year ago, I think. I don't exactly remember which catalog it came out in, but I immediately knew that this was going to be one of my favorites because, you know, I love to garden and I love roses and flowers, so I love the bigness and boldness. The stamps are actually, you can see the difference here, they are actually a little bigger than what's shown on the cover. So um, you often you need to open up the stamp case and look because this has thrown me a few times. I'll be looking at a greeting and say, oh, this is going to be perfect. And I open it and it's like, oh my goodness, it's way bigger <laughs> in real life. And then it doesn't fit on the stamped piece or something that I had in mind. So be sure that you always open up your stamp case and look. It might be different. So this stamp set, when I have shared with you earlier on in the year, it is actually meant to be a three-step stamp image on the rose and the leaves. So you have this image this image and this image and they all line up and stamp on top of each other so i keep these in my stamp case just so that i can remember what the color combinations look like oh blank paper i thought i had more <laughs> that's funny <laughs> so you can see let's look at the calypso coral so when you stamp the three different layers that's what you're going to get you're going to see these um, real beautiful definitions in this distinctive stamp set. So that's if you used one color. You can also use multiple colors. I've done that several times on other projects that I've shared with this set. But today we're using lots of colors all just within the one image. This is really a cool technique. Before we stamp that, I just have this here. I needed to remind to tell you this, that yesterday Stampin' Up! posted, they call it the last chance products. I personally call it the retiring list because after 23 and three quarter years as a demonstrator, it's ingrained in my brain that it's the retiring list. <laughs> So if you haven't seen this, you can jump over to pattystamps.com and scroll back to yesterday, April 22nd, and you will see a download for the list. But really the easiest way, especially if you don't have super great eyes or 
bifocals to read this list, the easiest thing to do is to go to pattystamps.com and then click on any of the shopping links and that'll go right to my online store and you can just see all of the retiring products there. It's just way easier, at least for me, to see it all visually than to look at that list. So anyway, just needed to tell you that. So what we're going to do is look at how I've created several colors in that one stamp. So you can see these all use kind of the, the red, orange, yellow palette. And then here we have this. I'm not sure. I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence on this one. This is like the blues into the Rococo Rose. Um. It, it's not my favorite, but it's still beautiful. This one is just all shades of blues and greens. This one I thought of my mom because she would have loved that one the best. And then these are the pinks and the purples. So very different once you start using all different colors. Super fun to experiment. Now, if you joined me at the beginning, you saw that I was talking about this being a three-step flower but on these cards we've only used I've only used two so here sorry that's this better so we have this image and the outline and that's all I've used I have not used the third piece it really doesn't need it this is fine with just these two pieces so that's what we're going to do so if you want to try this you're going to need felt now I found this piece um I don't remember if it was at, does it say? It doesn't say. I don't know if it was at a fabric store or just a craft store. It was 12 by 18 inches. And this is a fairly thick piece of felt. I, I know that you can't exactly tell that, but I'm just telling you, this is thicker than just cheaper normal felt. So if you can only find the thinner felt, which is really thin, I would recommend doubling up your piece of felt. Uh, I just found in all my experimenting that you needed a little more cushion than just a super thin piece of felt. So either one piece of thick or two layers of thin. Either way is perfectly fine. And I'll show you how I do this. I like to put my piece of felt in one of the clear stamp cases and I just leave it in there. And that's really about all the amount of ink you need. I'm going to ink one to show you, but I just wanted to show you uh, how this looks. So this uh, I found was nice to put a post-it note and write down the ink I used because later if it needs re-inking, trust me, you'll look at that and think, uh-oh, what did I use? And you won't remember. I made these cards 11 months ago. These have been in a box for 11 months with a note reminding me to do a video. <laughs> like crazy, right? <laughs> yeah, so, um, ay ay ay. <laughs> I, it's, yeah, life is busy. Anyway, so my point is 11 months later, you're not going to remember what ink you use. So if you want to re-ink it, write it down, and then you can see I've got my pool party, my Bermuda Bay, and Coastal Cabana. And people often ask me, how did I get these little dots on the top? I use any Stampin' Up! embellishment, any little um, epoxy dot, um, even just a white pearl would work, and I color it with our Stampin' Blends. And if we don't have an exact color, I use something that's close. Because when these are all in a drawer, I like to just kind of scan, and and then I can always pick it up and look. And then I write with a fine tip Sharpie, and I write what it is. That's just my system. But anyway, that works for me. So we are creating concentric circles of color. So in the middle, I would have started with my lightest and put pool party in the middle. And then I would have gone to my second lightest or second darkest, however you want to say it, Coastal Cabana. And I put drops around here. And then a little bit of the darkest, Bermuda Bay, goes on the outside. And then I use that as my ink pad and this is what comes out. So when you stamp this image using that pad, you get those variations in color. 
Now, since these are fairly close in color, these three shades, you're not seeing a huge difference like you would if you used almost totally different um, colors like this one. This was Seaside Spray, Highland Heather, and Melon Mambo. So those are fairly different colors from each other. Hang on. I, I'm sorry. I need to just see why I am not seeing comments. I'm seeing them up here on my phone, but it's I'm like on my tippy toes trying to see this. So I'm sorry if I'm missing your comments. This is kind of crazy today. Why is it doing that? Um, well, gosh, sorry. I'm going to do my best to peek up here on my phone and see your live comments. So that's kind of the basis of how it works. So let's ink one and let's look at how this looks when you put the uh, ink onto the felt. I'm going to do it inside this case. So we're going to take this one. And by the way, you can keep these for a long time. Like I've kept these all year. The reason this one looks all funny is because I thought, oh, I wonder if you can rinse it out and use new colors. <laughs> but it, it like totally bled the color. I did re-ink it and it's okay, but it just looks funny. So it, it no, will no longer look like that. It will look kind of funny. But you can keep like a year. I've had these for a year and you can still keep using them. It's like, wow, like, I don't know. Okay, so we're going to do, oh my gosh, I put my, hang on, put my finger in that one. See, it's still all inky. I picked that thing up and I got, oh, I got a green thumb. Ha ha. Yeah, I know. You're probably tired of my babbling. Let's go. Let's get this done. So we're going to start with a Mango Melody and we're going to do the inner circle area. And I'm really not squeezing that much. It doesn't take much. Then we're going to do Flirty Flamingo and we're just going around the mango melody and since I know that I'm wanting to use this wild rose stamp I'm trying to make this circle roughly the size of this you don't need to ink obviously the entire rectangle and this is calypso coral So we're just going to do that as our third circle. So now we're going to try it and see how it looks. And one thing I have noticed is that right away when I ink this and I stamp it, sometimes it's either like too blotchy or too much ink. Let's see. But if I let this sit a little bit, um, it, it comes out a little softer and also this will start to kind of soften a bit. So that is fairly dark just because the ink is so fresh, but this is going to soften as we let this sit. So let's see, I'm going to use another piece and we're going to use this one that I did yesterday. I inked it yesterday just because I wanted to remember how did, how does this work? I couldn't, I just want to make sure I remembered. <laughs> so I cleaned my stamp and now we're going to look at this one. So this one was the pool party, coastal cabana and Bermuda Bay and it is gorgeous. So pretty. This one's already lightening and softening. Can you see that difference? I don't know if you can tell. I can tell in person that the colors are already blending and softening out. They're not as vibrant as right when you stamp it. And then I'm going to stamp the outline image. So on this one, I'm going to go with Bermuda Bay, which was my darkest. Let me give you a tip about this stamp set. So I have put a piece of washi tape on my block on one side. And do you see, you can kind of see this little, I don't lump this, well, it's a petal, but I'm just saying how it sticks out right there. So I have aligned that and I've put these on my block in the same orientation. And then I have 
put that washi tape up at the top and that's going to help me align this. Now, of course, I'm not going to stick my head under the camera, so we'll see how close that comes to. Whoa, pretty good, right? But what I'm looking at is that little petal, and I can see that. And I know that when I stamped the first image, I rotated it to the right and I rotated to the left, so I knew with the outline that's what I would do. So pretty easy. Isn't that fun? It's, it's beautiful. Oh, I didn't bring an ink pad down here with one to stamp this outline. I only brought a couple colors, so we're not going to do the outline on that, but um, you can see how that outline works. And then what I'll do is I'm just going to grab this one, and this is from a year ago. And this I inked with a few different shades of green, and look at that. It is still completely all inky in there. This might actually be too much ink, but we'll just see. We'll see how that looks. Ooh, it's actually very beautiful, isn't it? So then you can stamp your leaves, uh, maybe there. And then if you want to, you can go in with the, the outline stamp and stamp over it. I really think that this is pretty without the outline. So either way, either way works. Um, yeah, but those that is from a year ago. I inked that and just left it in the case. So it's pretty amazing. This one also was from a year ago. Seaside Spray, Highland Heather, and Melon Mambo in this selection. So we can actually do that one. I have paper. And now I have somewhere. I just have Mambo on my hand somewhere. Ay, ay, ay. So let's clean pretty sure I already cleaned this. Yes. All right. So let's do this one and it should turn out like this. And again, I'm going to look at that piece of washi and I know that it's facing like up, but I'm going to twist to the right a little bit and then I'm going to twist to the left a little bit. Let's do a third one right there. And you can see how it's like getting a little bit lighter as I'm doing that. And then we'll put gorgeous grape for our outline. Oh, I'm really missing all the comments. This is making me so sad. I wish they were showing up on my iPad. Ay, ay, ay. So sorry. So there you go. Super fun. I mean, is that just like way amazing cool? I think it is fantastic. And just depending on the colors that you like, you can do any combinations and you can pick any outline for the outline portion. And I just, I think it's really amazing. So... Gosh, I wish I could. I'm really afraid to touch my phone and scroll back because I'm afraid that um, it's like going to end the video if I try to find the comments. Let me just let me look on my iPad one more time here and see if I can figure out why these comments. It says swipe left to reveal comments. And then I do that and nothing happens and it's black. And all I can see is this list of people that are watching. Ay, 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 I'm so sad. Darn it. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, well, all I can see up here on my phone are the last two comments. I'm glad you liked it. I can see a couple of you liked it. And it is, again, if you missed the beginning, the stamp set is called To a Wild Rose. It does have matching dies if you wanted to cut these out and pop them up. But um, for this particular technique, I like it just stamped right on the card. It's just super easy. It is. Thank you, Kathy. It, my um, iPad is on portrait and it was working for a couple months to see the comments. And then today it's not. So you just really got to love technology. I do appreciate your your trying to help. Um, yeah, because it wasn't. Well, you know what? I'm going to switch it to landscape. Who knows? Maybe that will. Um, uh, 
yeah, no, that didn't help. I thought, who knows, maybe that would help, but it didn't. Yeah, darn. Thank you. I am so glad you enjoyed this. I hope that you will give this a try. I know a lot of you have felt. It doesn't have to be white. I'm sure it could be any color. I bet you could try this. I'm sure you have some ink refill bottles and a piece of felt, and I bet you could try this. And try it with some other sets, too. Um, oh, so Jean is asking, how is it different than baby wipes? I think the difference is that this you can keep around for, like I said, I did these a year ago and they're still fine. I didn't even add ink to them. I think with a baby wipe, I, I mean, I can't say this for sure, but I don't think that in a year your baby wipe would still um, retain these circles. I think the baby wipe is going to like bleed more. I don't know. Somebody could try that. Here's the one that we did back in the beginning, and you can see how this is really softened in color. At least it is in person. I don't know. It looks like really dark on my screen, but anyway. So I think that would be my answer of how this might be different than the baby wipe technique. Yes, camellias. It would be pretty. And I did try it with the hydrangea stamp in... Is that called Beautiful Friendship, I think? And I liked it, but I liked this rose better. Uh, so try it. Try it with other things. Thank you. I am so glad you... Oh, yes. Uh, baby wipe would definitely dry out. Okay. Yeah. And I was shocked that I could still use these little felt pads a year later. Like that's... Isn't that amazing? I think it's amazing. So... Oh, wait. I just found something on my iPad. Oh, no, sorry. I toggled between comments on and comments off and it still didn't work. Aye, aye, aye. Oh, thanks, Michelle. She says it looks like my garden. Like, right, all these pretties. All these pretties. I know, so pretty. So pretty. So thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this idea, this technique. And I hope that you will use it and try it with other stamp sets. And I'm super sorry if I missed your live comment. Um, don't know what's going on with the iPad today. I'm sorry, but we will hopefully get something else worked out for next time. Uh, so, oh, oh, okay. Margaret is just saying, um, any other stamp sets to use? Yes. So I did try the beautiful friendship hydrangea since that stamp is really stipply. You know what I mean? It's like, it's made up of tiny little dots. It just did not look as good to me as I thought it looked with this more solid image. So that was my opinion. But um, I'm going to actually take all these fun little felt pads up to my craft room. And I am going to um, see if I have some other. Oh, Christmas tree. Great idea, Jean. And I just saw a comment go by about um, Michelle's mom. Hi, Michelle's mom. Good to see you on here. So fun. All right. Well, anyway, thank you again for joining me and I will hopefully be back next week with another technique. And if you have any questions, let me know. You can contact me through pattystamps.com anytime. Thanks again, everybody. Bye.